Hi, my name is Tristan Gwilman from Macquarie University, and today I'm going to talk about my work deciphering the, the ecology of some of the East Coast coolest predators, marlin. Now, off the East Coast, we can find three species of marlin, striped marlin, the black marlin, and the blue marlin. Now, these fish are, can all grow to huge sizes, um, well over 100 kilos, sometimes reaching three, 400 kilos, and are really similar in sort of shape and environment. So as a result, we often sort of just lump them together and assume they're all doing the same thing. Um, where do these fish come from? These fish come from the tropics. Okay, now why do they hang out in the tropics? Because they like the warm water. As a result, they're seasonal off the coast of um, off the east coast, following the East Australia current down as it makes its annual warm water push. With climate change, this push is getting stronger and stronger, driving marlin further and further south. Unfortunately, we don't really know what impact marlin have on ecosystems um, and what impact they'll continue to have as they push further and further south. That's what my study tried to address. Now, how did we do this? We used stable isotopes. Now, stable isotopes work in the, you know, you are what you eat kind of way. Environmental variables will cause ratios to change. And if we measure the isotopes in a fish, we can work backwards and see what it's been eating or where it's been eating. So the first one we used was carbon-13. Now, carbon varies based on the plant, the plant type in an ecosystem. And as a result, different ecosystems of different prey groups will have different carbon ratios. Nitrogen-15 builds up as it goes um, higher and higher in the food web. So if we measure the nitrogen-15 of a fish, we can see roughly where it sits in the food chain. Lastly, sulfur. Sulfur varies between the bottom and the surface of the ocean, essentially, the benthic and pelagic environments. So if you measure this, you can see if your feed, fish is feeding more on surface-dwelling species, bottom-dwelling species, or a bit of a mix. Now, when we measured the isotopes of marlin, we actually found some key differences. Now, we didn't get enough black marlin for analysis, so I'll focus just on striped and blue marlin. So what we found is that, if you look in the first plot, is that um, striped marlin had a really, really wide carbon range, but quite a narrower nitrogen range. So this suggests that they're feeding mostly on one food chain level or one prey size, but on a wide range of prey types. Blue marlin had a bit narrower carbon, but much wider narrow, uh, nitrogen. This suggests the opposite that they're feeding on fewer prey types, but of all sorts of sizes. If you look in the second plot, so the only difference really in that plot is the carbon, but the sulfur changes very little between the two. And, as, and this suggests that both species have very little, um, because of the values are so high, both species have very little benthic influence in their diet, feeding mostly on the surface. So what this suggests is that they do have different feeding behaviors and they aren't just the same thing. So we know through dietary studies that blue marlin tend to like scombrid, so that's your tuna and your mackerel, um, and there is an abundance of these off Sydney. So everything from giant yellowfin to tiny little um, slimy mackerel, and it's likely that blue marlin are just feeding on this, which explains the, the narrower carbon but really wide nitrogen. Striped marlin, on the other hand, are often filmed feeding on schooling bait. Now we have heaps of different types of fish that school off Sydney, so everything from yellowtail, slimy mackerel, a lot of them from different families, um, and Striped marlin are often seen feeding on these. This is likely to be the case um, with the isotope ratios we've observed. So this supports what's known through fishermen. So fishermen will often catch blue marlin around, um, you know, yellowfin tuna schools. And when they mark up large schools of a small bait species, that's where they usually catch the striped marlin. What it suggests is that we need species specific management. These species aren't feeding on the same thing in the ecosystem. They aren't going to have the same effect on the ecosystem, and we need to factor that in when managing them. 